Good afternoon, Ajax. Welcome, and thank you for tuning into our Town of Ajax In Conversation, presented in partnership with the Ajax Anti-Black Racism Task Force for Black History Month. My name is Natasha Sharma, and I'm the Diversity and Inclusion Coordinator. We are joining you today remotely from various locations. We appreciate your patience and understanding should we have any technical difficulties during this live program. We would like to assure you that there is a technical team behind the scenes. If we do experience any issues, we will be back up and running on the same platforms as soon as possible. Today, the panel discussion takes place. We do encourage our audience to submit any questions, comments, or reflections down below in the comments section. We do have our social media team behind the scenes, and they will be able to relay a few questions to me during the Q&A portion after the panel discussion. If we are unable to get to all of your questions today, we will follow up with you and ensure you receive all of the necessary information and resources. Now to begin. In the summer of 2020, Ajax Council initiated the, establ the establishment of the Ajax Anti-Black Racism Task Force. This leadership by all of Ajax Council has resulted in a new path forward. Now, to get us started, here is a video message from Mayor Collier to speak of that path forward. Good afternoon. The town of Ajax embraces and values the opportunity to celebrate Black History Month in partnership with the Ajax Anti-Black Racism Task Force. Ajax celebrates the stories, experiences, and accomplishments of people of African and Caribbean origin. I'm a proud supporter of our Black community, and this past summer, I've learned a lot about what it means to be an ally. I'm learning more each day about what personal responsibilities allyship carries, what it means to lift Black voices and what each of us can do to make a positive change for the Black community. I think that it's important to stand together now more than ever as a community during Black History Month and in the future. 2020 has shed light on the systemic barriers experienced by the Black community and the many ways in which we can all enact meaningful social and systemic changes as a community together. My hope is to continue building on the momentum towards social justice in order to help dismantle systemic racism and honor the history, legacies, and experiences of the Black community. Happy Black History Month, and I hope you all enjoy the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Collier and Ajax Council for your special video message and thoughtful words. Black History Month is, is celebrated and shines a spotlight on the many contributions of the Black community. By remembering the legacies of leaders and the events in the history of the African and Caribbean diaspora. As an, as an ally personally, Black History Month commemorates a significant time for unity through listening, acquiring knowledge and understanding through impactful conversations. It's a time to celebrate the past and use it as a guiding principle to improve the present. Now, let's all begin the conversation by reflecting together. Hey, Black child, do you know who you are? Who you really are? Do you know you can be what you want to be if you try to be what you can be? Hey, Black child, do you know where you are going? Where you're really going? Do you know you can learn what you want to learn if you try to learn what you can learn? Hey, Black child, do you know you are strong? I mean, really strong. Do you know you can do what you want to do if you try to do what you can do? Hey, black child, be what you can be. 
Learn what you must learn. Do what you can do. And tomorrow, your nation will be what you want it to be. Now, I would like to introduce our facilitator for today, Monica Edwards, a member of the Ajax Anti-Black Racism Task Force and proud Ajax resident. Over to you, Monica. Well, thank you very much, Natasha. Good afternoon, Ajax. My name is Monica Edwards, and as Natasha said, I am a proud resident of Ajax for the last 23 years. I hope this can be the beginning of a few series that we're going to have with positive conversations within the community. So let's begin the conversation. The first thing I'd like to do is introduce the panel members to you. All panelists are members of the Ajax Anti-Racism Task Force. First of all, Mariska Thomas, she's our chair. Then we have Dane Thomas, our vice chair. We have Pauline Vassal, our treasurer and secretary. And we have Kira Van Dusen, our youth member. So welcome to all the panel members. So I'm going to start again by beginning the conversation. We looked at that a little bit at the beginning. So I'm going to start by posing the same questions to all four of you for the beginning. Um, what we're going to look at, it's Black History Month, so we want to know how are people celebrating it. So I'm going to start off with you, Mariska. So why do you think it is important to celebrate Black History Month and what does it mean to you? Good afternoon. During Black History Month, I reflect on the struggles of Black people, their resilience and perseverance to overcome challenges. It is important for our youth to learn about the contributions of Black people as the youth are our future leaders. And it will definitely motivate them to achieve greatness so they can also leave a legacy. I would also like to acknowledge a trailblazer, Honorable Jean Augustine. She was the first black woman elected as a member of parliament in 1993. In 1995, she also introduced a motion that was passed unanimously by the House of Commons to recognize Black History Month across Canada. This would be a legacy and why it is so important to recognize the contributions of Black people so our youth can be inspired. Thank you. Thank you, Mariska. I'm going to move on to Dane. Dane, I'm going to pose the same question to you. So why do you think it is important to celebrate Black History Month and what does it mean to you? Thank you. As a person of African descent who was born in Jamaica, raised in Canada, and a resident of Ajax, I acknowledge the rich Black history that has been a part of my life. This includes the many examples of great people who are my ancestors, including my parents, family, educators, and many others. There are also many Canadians that left a lasting impression on the meaning of bringing Black history to life. Uh, who are some of my influencers? One is my great uncle, uh, Frank Barrington Ricketts. He was a Jamaican politician and a former parliamentarian in the West Indies Federal Parliament. Ricketts served as a member of the House of Representatives of the West Indies, of the West Indies Federation from 1958 to 1962. He was also a Minister of Natural Resources and Agriculture on the Federal Council of State. Reverend Dr. Frank Lawrence and Etta Lawrence, local historians and community development leaders, both in Canada and in the parish of St. Anne, Jamaica. And yes, they are my parents. And then third, I think of Florence Harrison, an educator in the mid 70s and 80s, a local high school, York Memorial Collegiate Institute, my old high school, where Ms. Harrison, hearing the need of black students uh, and the need of support, she created a safe space for high school students 
to let off steam, find mentors, study, and just be themselves. Out of this opportunity was born the Black Students Association. Thank you, Dane. Okay, Pauline, I'm going to ask you the same question. So why do you think it is important to celebrate Black History Month and what does it mean to you? Thank you, Monica. Black History Month provides a podium for us to tell others about our experiences. It opens the conversation on Black history. It also gives recognition of those who has paved the way for us through their sweat and blood for the sacrifice and suffering they endured for racial equality. Celebrating Black History Month allows us to pause and remember their stories so we can commemorate their accomplishments. Thank you, Pauline. And now we're gonna move on to Kira. And Kira, again, it's the same question. Why do you think it is important to celebrate Black History Month and what does it mean to you? So for me, Black History Month is a time to acknowledge the struggles, obstacles, and achievements of people who look like me. Doing so prompts me to practice gratitude and also to do a little bit of self-reflection. So during my lifetime, I do hope to help um, eliminate some of the obstacles that Black people do face in spaces like the town of Ajax where I live, uh, as well as in my school and in the workplace. Uh, and so this month I often reflect on my efforts to do so. Additionally, there are so many major events that are occurring across the world. And thanks to recent developments in technology, we have never been more connected and therefore more affected by all of the events that are occurring around the world. And so, uh, on any given day, it is very difficult to focus on one specific issue, <clears throat> excuse me, or one set of issues. And so I think that Black History Month is really important because it also represents a time to focus more specifically on issues that affect the Black community. Um, and so what then we do at this time um, is actually try and develop and come up with some solutions and then actually follow through on them. Thank you, Kira. So I'm going to go back to Mariska now. And my question to you, Mariska, is you quoted that it's important to celebrate the accomplishments of Black people. Can you elaborate? There are many reasons that the accomplishments of Black people should be celebrated because it inspires us to reach for the stars and dream big. For example, Maya Angelou inspired Amanda Gorman who delivered a powerful poem at Joe Biden's presidential inauguration. Amanda Gorman will now be an inspiration to others. In Canada, there are five Black Canadians honored on postage stamps. They are Albert Jackson, Carrie Best, Viola Desmond, Lincoln Alexander, and Kay Livingstone. Their accomplishments are celebrated and will also inspire us to leave a legacy. Thank you. Thank you, Mariska. I'm now going to move on to Dane. My question for you, Dane, is what does Black excellence mean to you and why is it important to celebrate? Black excellence is about greatness offering the very best. We see that as we celebrate through the 28 days of February, which in my mind should really be extended to celebrate black excellence 365 days out of the year. It is important, uh, sorry, its importance comes from the contributions of our peoples of our past, present and through activities. These activities recognize achievements and remembering our history. The UN General Assembly proclaimed 2015 to 2024 as the International Decade of People of African Descent. That is Resolution 68-237, citing the need to strengthen national, regional, and international cooperation in 
relation to the full enjoyment of economic, social, cultural, civil, and political rights by people of African descent. And their three main goals were identified. One is recognition, second is justice, and the third is development. This is an opportunity to highlight, acknowledge the pain and acknowledge the pain of the past and build steps towards black excellence. Thank you, Dane. Pauline, what strides have you seen in the community? The strife that I the stride that I've seen in my community and all three levels of government is the acknowledgement that anti-Black racism exists and are taking it seriously. For example, in the town of Ajax, they've created the first anti-Black racism task force, which is a sign that they are listening and are willing to spearhead this change. We are starting to have uncomfortable conversations at the table about anti-Black racism, and this is a big stride in our community. Thank you, Pauline. And now I move over to Kira. Kira, my question for you is, from a youth perspective, how has this past year's social justice movement affected youth and the upcoming generation? Although some of the events um, of this past year were sometimes difficult to process and even shocking to some, I think that the upcoming generation was able to see sometimes in real time some of the gruesome injustices that occur across the world and that affect black people. I know that for me, a lot of it was difficult to watch, but despite that, many young people are still watching, still listening, still taking the time to learn and actually educate others. And so what I've heard from many of my peers is that it's simply no longer enough to be non-racist. We must have the difficult conversations and we must hold people accountable for their actions or the lack thereof that contribute to or that make them complicit um, with the oppression of black, of black people. So in short, I think that the events of the past year have actually ignited a fire within the upcoming generation. And so young people are now actively working to not only be non-racist, but to be anti-racist. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go back to Mariska now. Mariska, my question to you is, do you think that the contributions of black people should be celebrated and acknowledged throughout the year? Definitely. This would be an educational opportunity to explore through different avenues and could be through a speaker series, dialogues with the youth for empowerment, summer camps, and many, many other ways to continue the conversation. It also gives an understanding and knowledge to the wider community of our history and provides an opportunity to celebrate our achievements. Some people have been very, very innovative in continuing the education of Black history. For example, in the US, Unique Jones Gibson, creative artist and founder of Because of Them, We Can subscription boxes. She designed an innovative vehicle to educate the youth about Black excellence all year round. It started with children dressing as iconic Black figures with the hope that they would feel connected and understand their accomplishments. Her project expanded into games and other educational tools for children to continuously learn about Black history. Also, in listening to a recent presentation by the Ontario Black History Society, I interpreted that when Black History Month was initially contemplated, it was meant to be a continuous dialogue. Thank you. Thank you, Mariska. Dane, I have a question for you. So what challenge or challenges do you face as a Black professional in the business industry? Great question. So I've been the only person of color in the room, you know, and I've seen this in my previous corporate life 
and in my current role as the owner of a sales and marketing agency. I've also been recognized as a pioneer, both as an individual and a business, and within my business. This is a battle of the mind. You know, this comes from always having to prove that I belong. I was though that success comes from leaning on others who have overcome. And Durham is a great example of a place to do business where seeing others who've achieved this challenge of overcoming some of the things that I've suggested previously. And my follow-up question to you, Dane, is what or do you have any advice for fellow entrepreneurs? Absolutely. Network, network, and network. Again, I use the example of Durham. Uh, use the ability to know who lives in the town of Ajax and the surrounding cities. Great people, great places to work. And be, use those people to help build your business and your client base and your profile. The other thought is stay curious, ask questions, ask for assistance. And my favorite, ask for advice. Use other entrepreneurs' services to grow your business. As black professionals, sometimes we need to lift each other up. And, you know, there are many professionals that uh, include accountants, bookkeepers, admin, marketing, and others. And then finally, build success around other people who have achieved and learn from them. They're great resources. Thank you very much, Dane. That was appreciated. My question, next question is for Pauline. So Pauline, what does diversity and inclusion mean to you? Diversity and inclusion to me means the acknowledgement of differences and the elimination of barriers. By embracing diversity, everyone will feel valued and included. Applying fair and equal treatment to all is the way of diversity and inclusion. I believe we can learn from all different walks of life. I really feel that we can learn so much by being exposed to different experiences and perspectives. Thank you, Pauline. My next question is going to be back to Kiera, and it's a follow up to your last question. And my question is, in what what are some ways in which the youth that have been participating in the Black Lives Matter social justice movement? So what, what are some ways that they've been participating and how do you feel it's helped? So I just want to start off by saying that social media is such a powerful tool especially given the current circumstances. And by that, I specifically mean the pandemic. Lots of people are stuck at home, can't necessarily see their friends. Um, and so it's definitely been a difficult time. And I think social media has helped a lot. So uh, on June 5th, 2020, hundreds of people actually showed up to an anti-Black racism protest. It was a peaceful protest in Ajax that was organized literally days before it occurred, mainly by two teenage girls. So it was spread via, or information about this event was spread via the internet and more specifically social media. I, for one, heard about it through Facebook. And so an event like that really showed me that social media is an extremely efficient tool for bringing people together. So I think that yeah, lots of young people are using social media to their advantage to find like-minded people, bring them together, to share information, to address injustices, and to help find solutions. And so um, all of these smaller successes like getting hundreds of likes or having lots of people share your videos is just kind of building on the confidence of young people, um, empowering them and um, basically amplifying the voices of young activists. Thank you, Kiera. I'm going to go back to Mariska. And Mariska, my question for you is, can you share what the role of the Ajax Anti-Black Racism Task Force is and some of the great work that they are doing? The Ajax Anti-Black Racism, AABR Task Force, 
was created to make recommendations to implement anti-racist policies and practices and a call on public leaders to take action. Action on systemic and institutional racism to combat barriers experienced by Black people and other racialized groups in the town of Ajax. Since the inception of the task force, the strategic work plan was created, identifying long and short-term goals. And we have been working diligently on specific goals, researching information, and finalizing presentations for recommendations, which would be presented in March to the mayor and council for approval and subsequent implementation to combat barriers that contribute to systemic anti-Black and institutional racism. The vision for the AABR task force is working in harmony with the town of Ajax to ensure the community is a welcoming place and providing opportunities for all people to prosper. Thank you. Thank you, Mariska. And my other question now is gonna be back to Kiera. And Kiera, what impact does celebrating Black history have on you? Celebrating Black History Month is, a very, is very intense for me. I experience a variety of emotions. So during Black History Month, I spend a lot of time learning about past injustices, as I said before, and that can be extremely difficult. Although all injustices do require attention and they must be stopped, rectified and prevented. Knowing that people who look like me are disadvantaged in many ways simply because of the way that they look is very personal. So sometimes it does ignite some negative emotions such as sadness and a little bit of anger. Uh, however, I also take the time to learn about historical and pres present successes of the Black community, as well as the many ways in which uh, society's treatment of Black people has improved over the years. So these moments, coupled with the knowledge that there is so much strength in my skin color alone, is truly inspirational. Change is still occurring and it will continue to occur. I know this because there are many caring and accomplished people like the members of the of Ajax's Anti-Black Racism Task Force all across the world. So ultimately, celebrating Black History Month makes me feel uplifted and it inspires me to do my very best to have a positive impact in my community. Thank you, Kiera. So right now, I just want to thank all the panel members for sharing your thoughts and contributions to the uh, conversation today. Uh, what we're going to look now is we're going to take a few questions that have been submitted by our audience. Hi, Monica. This is Natasha right now. Um, I'm just uh, I'm just going to um, reiterate a, a few questions from the social media team right now. Uh, the first question that's been posed is, what are some of the initiatives that the Ajax Anti-Black Racism Task Force is working on in the town of Ajax? Thank you, Natasha. I'm going to turn this one over to Mariska, and maybe Dane, you can also jump in. Thank you, Monica. One of them is initiation a, a youth internship program another one is the un declaration of the decade of people of african descent and another one is a, a survey to the community in ajax to hear their challenges so that's about three of them we have about 10 goals we also, another one that we are working on is the speaker series. And some of those goals will be presented in March to the mayor and council. Okay, Dane, do you want to elaborate on group seven and eight? Yeah, we've, we've also acknowledged that uh, throughout the region, Ajax in particular business have been uh, adversely affected by the pandemic and we, black business in particular. And we really want to understand what the effect would be or has been on, on the business community. Uh, I, as a business owner, is, have been affected. And I know that many of my uh, colleagues who operate bricks and mortar stores or are business professionals have been, uh, again, affected. So part of our 
recognition is that this is a problem and uh, working with the task force and identifying an opportunity uh, that the town can uh, use through maybe potentially through economic development to address this is one of our goals. Yes, and another point also is the training for the Town of Ajax, anti-racist training to the Mayor and Council and also to the employees. So that's another initiative that is being worked on. Thank you, Mariska and Dane. Natasha? Hi, Monica. Okay. The next question is, how can allies support the Black community? And I think this is a question that could be posed to the entire panel. Good question. Would anybody like to start off? Well, I'll I just would, pick somebody then. Pauline. <laughs> no, I was just thinking by participating. Participating, whether it's town hall meetings, send your questions up through the town of Ajax or any ideas that you have. The task force is willing to look into all your questions and, you know, and we look into those. And there's so many ways just to be active in your community. Kiera, do you have any thoughts on this question? I would have to agree with Pauline. Participation, I think, is key. Um, I think a lot of the times people are worried about saying the wrong thing, um, sounding ignorant, um, you know, and uh, I think that, that is a, those are definitely valid concerns, but at the same time, those are not going to solve any of our problems. And so I think just not being afraid to ask questions, being willing to participate, um, also, you know, providing any suggestions or any ideas, right? So it's all about being willing to have those difficult conversations, asking those questions that you're not so sure about asking. I think once you get over that, then you know it'll be smooth sailing from there. Thank you. Mariska or Dane, do you have anything to add? Uh, okay, I always I like the concept. Okay. Go ahead, Mariska. Uh, philosopher once said, United we stand, divided we fall. So that's why we need everybody working together, partners, allies. So working as a team to make Ajax and the world a better place. Thank you. Yeah. Thank I you. always like the concept of staying curious and uh, curiosity may have killed a cat, but it doesn't hurt all of us. So. Curiosity is a good thing. And uh, in this case, ask questions. If you're not sure, just ask. Mm -hmm. And that's the best way an ally mm -hmm. can be of assistance. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to add, um, it's not only black people, it's other racialized groups working mm -hmm. together to achieve this goal. We can't achieve this goal if we don't work together. Agreed. Definitely. Agreed. Excellent points. Okay. All right. Natasha, is there any more questions that you'd like to um, pose today? Yes, there is another question. Um, how can the community learn more about the task force and, and the work that they're doing? Mariska, would you like to answer this one? Yes, yes. All the information is posted on the IMO page on anti-black racism. And also there's a Facebook page. So if people can go onto the Ajax website, there's a lot of information. So as we complete on our initiatives, it will be posted on social media, on Twitter, etc., And even some information will be posted in the Ajax advertiser. So keep posted, keep looking, keep looking for that information, and it will all be posted when we complete our initiatives. Thank you. Thank you, Mariska. Natasha? Can the community learn about Black leaders and their contributions? 
Dane, would you like to answer this one or provide some input? Natasha, could you ask the question again? I missed part of it. One of the audience members have asked, where can I learn more about Black leaders and their contributions? Um, Canadian Black leaders are, um, there's lots of information, you know, in Ajax, we have a wonderful artist, Robert Small, who's created a calendar of black leaders uh, who are who are Canadian. And his, uh, his information is sold through uh, multiple locations, including, and, and he also pro provides the same information to schools, corporations, and so on. I'm, I'm plugging Robert because he is uh, a native of our community, but also has also been uh, acknowledged as probably one of the few people who have acknowledged a broad selection of Canadian black leaders. And um, I'm not sure if anybody else would like to contribute, but that's the one that comes to mind immediately. Okay, okay thank you. Mariska? The other one that comes to mind is the Ontario Black History Society. There's a lot of information, mm -hmm. of a lot of uh, seminars, webinars, and I learned a lot recently looking, joining their webinars. Thank you. Thank I you. Can also acknowledge, I can also acknowledge that here in Ajax, uh, Cultural Expressions um, has put on a Black History Month event over the last 14 years, and that event itself has provided a, a great overview of black history in the area and um, that's under the Durham Black History, history uh, Month um, event profile so it's cultural expressions. I also Thank find you. that the internet has a wealth of ex information so when you can always go to the internet and you'll find lots of activities and information especially if you're looking for Canadian uh, Black history information, you can find that there too. And Kira, do you have anything to add in regards to the youth perspective of this whole thing? Yes, so actually earlier I was talking about youth leveraging social media. And so it's amazing how many people um, have basically turned their social media profiles. I'm talking TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, basically turned it into just information. And most of it is about black history. Um, so if you can find some Canadian TikTokers, YouTubers, people on Instagram um, who have dedicated a lot of their time um, to finding and doing lots of research about black history, black history and um, some of the more important people, um, I'm, I promise you, you will not have wasted your time and you will learn a ton. Thank you. Natasha, go ahead, please. There is one final question that we'll be able to cover today. And this is a question that's posed to the entire panel. Um, uh, because today we are reflecting, I do think that, that this is a very um, valuable question. How has the social justice movement that has started in 2020 affected each panel member? And we'll start with Kiera. So as I was saying a little bit earlier, uh, it's definitely been tough on me. Uh, it's been a little bit of an emotional roller coaster. Um, I've been feeling lots of different things, but ultimately uh, it has ignited a bit of a fire in me. I wouldn't say that I was doing nothing before, but um, I am now more committed than ever um, to not only dealing with, not only being anti-racist uh, and dealing with anti-black racism, but ultimately just contributing to uh, diversity and inclusion um, and devoting myself to that in, uh, in every aspect within Ajax and every other community that I'm a part of and every space that I'm in. Thank you. Polly? Yes, uh, looking at what happened even with our neighbors um, in the US, it changed my perspective on how powerful the black people are. And I see what happened in Georgia with everyone coming out, they registered to vote. And I, on, for me, I see a positive change. And just myself being a part of this um, anti-black racism task force, it has changed me 
into being someone who look for the information, see how I can do better in my community, because the information is there, is how we use it. So this has changed my life and have my dedication to work towards a change for Black people. Thank you. Dane? I come, I come from a history of people who have not been have not been afraid to step up and speak out. Um, I, I mentioned some of those people in my earlier um, introduction, and that's given me the strength to realize that my voice matters, my actions matter, and the fact is that I can surround myself with people, as you see on the committee, who also acknowledge that these things matter. Um, when I say my voice matters. Um, I take a step forward knowing that everything I do is going to benefit the community that I belong to. And a community starts with a family. And, and when you stretch your arms out, you're welcoming the village around you. Um, and the village is, is multiracial. But the anger that I felt, not just in the last year, but you know, when we think of the decades of pain, really does propel forward when I realize that I can't live in anger, I have to live, I have to find something else to propel me forward. And, and um, my voice is that I will use my voice to change, for change. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Mariska. <laughs> The recent events in the United States were troubling, heart-wrenching, but it also brought increased awareness on the issues, issues that should be dealt with for anti-Black racism, systemic racism, and institutional racism. So the role now with the ABR task force, whatever we can do, no matter how small or, or large, we are here to make a difference. We'll be making a difference in the community. And I look forward to that. So as I, I mentioned, it's an increased awareness that change is necessary. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, I just want to thank everybody for your questions and thank you to all the panel members for your time and dedication in contributing to the conversation. Thank you, Monica, on being our wonderful facilitator for the afternoon. And thank you to all the panel members for your reflections on Black History Month. To continue the conversation, please visit us at ajax.ca slash taskforce or facebook.com slash AABRTF. And as usual, you can always connect with us on our Town of Ajax social media platforms. Thank you and have a wonderful day.